Hi and welcome to Polly Originals with Fiona Abel Smith. For today's project I thought we'd make some fun leaf bowls using real leaves and using them to mould and create this nice effect. This one is really good if you've never used polymer clay before and I'll take you through everything you need to know if you're starting out afresh but it's also equally good for those of you who've got lots of experience in polymer clay or also have lots of leftover scraps of polymer clay. The veneer we're going to use today is based on the scrap technique. You know when you're putting your clay through, this again this is for people who work with polymer clay, you know when you're putting all your bits of scrap clay through the pasta machine you get these lovely sheets of marbled clay and you think wow that would look really good for a project. This is the project they would look good for. But what I've done is I've just shown you how to make a slightly more ordered um, look and how you can actually promote that look and get this nice marbling which hopefully mimics how leaves look, particularly the autumnal leaves, and then I say that one has just got slightly more colours in it, just to give a bit of variety. The amount of clay I'm going to use in this tutorial is certainly enough to make this one, which is the one I do. If you're making a larger leaf like this, just obviously use more clay. For those of you who've got stacks of leftover bits of clay, just use that. For those of you who are brand new, then you'll see later on I'm using clay straight out of the packets, and I'll show you the colours I use to get this effect. I've been using real leaves in polymer clay for many years. In fact, like a lot of polymer clay artists, it's one of the first things I did because they are just so good to use for moulds and they just take to the clay so well and give such lovely effects. And our local group were doing autumnal leaves, um, so this is why I came up with this little bowl idea. If you look online, you'll see there are lots of polymer clay bowls out there, all of them different, all of them using different techniques. So have a look around and see which ones you like. Hopefully there's enough new things in this one to make it worth your while watching this one. This is certainly the way I approach making little leaf bowls. The equipment you need to do this project is very straightforward. I've got a couple of things here that I'll mention which you don't really need, but for those of you who already work with polymer clay, if you've got them, then use them. I work on a big tile, a big ceramic tile, gives a nice um, smooth surface and allows you to move the clay around. I have used, just in a couple of places, one of these polymer clay blades, but you don't need to. As you'll see, I've just used it to sort of scrape the clay up off the tile, where if you put your clay onto one of these sheets of um, wax or baking paper, parchment, you don't need that at all. But for those of you who've got it, it's always handy. Little craft knife. You will need some form of roller just to roll over the clay, and a nice big chunky one is quite handy for today's thing. I've got a selection of paint brushes. A big one that I use to varnish with, um, you don't necessarily need to varnish, I'll come on to that later. Smaller one that I'm going to use for the acrylic paint, and then a nice small one which I'm going to use for the gilder's paste, and again I'll come on to that in just a moment. At one point we're going to attach baked clay to unbaked clay, and to help with that I just use a little bit of liquid polymer clay, and I've just decanted some into a pot here. There's loads of different brands you can get and they're equally good. However, if you haven't got that, strictly speaking you don't need it at all. If you just press the clay nicely together it will stick. Um, and also if you wanted to, just a tiny little dob of PVA glue can add and just give a little bit of extra bond if you wish. To decorate the outside edge of the bowl and the veins we're going to use acrylic paint. So for today's session I'm going to use a nice deep red colour because I'm going for the autumnal look. If you wanted to you can choose whatever colour you like. You'll see when I come onto the blue bowl at the end I've used a purple one, I've used brown ones in the past. Just use whatever colour will suit whichever colour leaf you're going for. For the very outside of the bowl, I'm using some gold decoration. Now, there's various ways you can do this. You can use acrylic paint, which works very well, so that's an option. You can use the Gilders paste, um, which they come in these tins. And then you simply rub your finger over the top. I'm going to be using this gold finger, which is a very nice, um, soft form of um, Gilders paste type thing. I uh, don't know the actual proper name for it, it's just called Goldfinger. Um, I've been using this for years, um, not just some polymer clay, but I used it um, with my painting way before that um, because it's used to um, patch up any little bits that are missing on gold frames and you simply put it on and buff it with a cloth. I have found, however, on the polymer clay, it doesn't dry completely in as much as you can still touch it and it gives a little bit of residue on your fingers so because of that when I'm using this I will then varnish over the top and I will varnish 
I'll use this one in particular, um, the Fimo gloss varnish, but any water soluble varnish that works on polymer clay would do. Don't use one of the ones which you need to um, clean your brushes in some form of paint cleaner, thinner or white spirit, that sort of thing, because that will actually pull this across the whole of your surface, um, which is what obviously you don't want to do when we're looking for a particular effect just on the outside. When I'm putting on my acrylic paint, I will use a small square of either greaseproof, wax, baking sheet, something like that. And on that, I also have a nice big sheet that I lay the whole of the veneer on to work with and just makes it easy. So this happens to be wax paper. Doesn't matter what you use, say greaseproof paper, wax paper, baking sheet, baking parchment, just something that you can put your clay on and peel off. To bake, we're going to use a small tile and we're going to tent our tile in aluminium foil. I'm also going to use some of this aluminium foil to create a base to sit our leaf in to create the bowl shape. Other than that I will use biodegradable wet wipes and tissues just to clean my um, surface and my hands as I go along. You can obviously also use just wet cloths work just as well. The last thing I will use is a pasta machine dedicated to polymer clay use. However, as I said, this technique works well whether you're used to polymer clay or not. So if you don't have a pasta machine, then when I talk about settings on the pasta machine, I'm going to talk about two settings, naught being the thickest on my pasta machine and six being a thin, medium sort of setting. If you don't have that, then get yourself a stack of playing cards and eight playing cards is equivalent to setting naught on my pasta machine and three playing cards is equivalent to setting six. So all you do when you've got your clay and if you want to roll it to a certain thickness, so obviously this is the thickest one, get yourself two stacks of evenly amount of playing cards. I've got two here. Your clay will sit in the middle and you just simply roll over until such time as your roller goes down and hits the level of the cards. Then you know you've got a sheet the same thickness as we are using. And I will also cut in a little bit from another video where I show you how to mix polymer clay by hand if you don't have a pasta machine to do the mixing for you. So to make our little leaf bowl, we are using real leaves. And these are ones I've just picked up outside um, when going either for a dog walk or just having a look around my garden. Um, most people should be able to find somewhere nearby, whether it's a park or just a tree in your street or something, or have a look around the bottom. Quite often the, um, the weeds have good leaves for doing this. And what we're looking for is a leaf with a really good vein detail, but also it's even better if as well as the main vein detail you've got lots of extra little bit of detail in there because that's going to give you the most detail when we use these to make our moulds for our bowls. So this one, so I've just had a forage, forage around, this one is an autumn anemone, this one is the maple or the sycamore tree, we've got some, I believe these are beech leaves, I've got some, um, this was a geranium leaf, again a nice detail on the back of that, that was from another flower, some form of lavatera I believe, dock leaf. Ones with the dock leaves, they'll work really well but they go um, limp very quickly after you pick them so you'd have to use them straight away. This one's from a cherry tree, again nice leaf detail. And when, when you found your leaf and decided which one you want to use, you want to get two leaves. Now if, if preferably you'll get them matching so that when you put them together like that there's going the same orientation and what you want to get is one bigger than the other and it's actually the smaller of the two we're using for the top of the bowl and the bigger leaf for the underneath. Preferably pick your leaves from the tree rather than picking them up um, once they've fallen off because again they go off very quickly and once they go crackly they don't make such a good impression and the first thing to do is to make sure they're nice and dry but also to make sure there's no insects on them because you don't want to be pressing down or killing any little insects or pressing them into the clay. So once your leaves are clean and dry then you're ready to go and we can start making our little leaf bowl. So today I'm using Sculpey Primo and I'm using cadmium yellow, 18 karat gold, orange, wasabi, green, olive, cadmium red and a little bit of black. And the amounts I'm using, I've got half an ounce or 14 grams of the yellow, the gold and the orange and then quarter an ounce or 7 grams of the wasabi, the green, the olive and the red. And the black, as you can see, is just a, a tiny little bit. All of the well-known brands of polymer clay will work well for this technique, so just use whatever you have to hand. And you could, of course, just use the colours exactly as they are here, um, just condition them in their individual colours. But I like to sort of mix the colours up a little bit and create uh, my own colours when I'm doing autumnal colours. So, for instance, I'm going to darken down one of the oranges, perhaps darken down the red. 
makes the green less vibrant by adding and mixing it in with other colours. So the way I'm going to mix them together is like this. So here's the colours and this is how I've broken them all up. So we've got some of the green, some of the olive and some of the yellow. We've got a whole of one piece of the orange with a little bit of black. We've got all of the red with just a little bit of the olive, just to dull that down a bit. We've got 18 karat gold with a little bit of the black. We've got some of the gold, a little bit of the wasabi and some of the orange. Yellow and orange, wasabi and yellow, then some green, some yellow and some gold. So those are all the colours all mixed up, ready to work and make our little leaf bowl. If you're working without a pasta machine, then either if you have a tissue blade with a tissue blade or if you haven't with a craft knife, just to give you a bit of a head start, put them into smaller pieces and then you can just mix it together with your hands. And just give it a roll. And then when it starts rolling, give it a twist, give it a roll, twist and roll and keep doing that and sort of turn upside down. Double up occasionally. And keep going until the colours completely mix together. Once you've got your nice finished colour, and it will be very well conditioned by the time you've done all that. So the look we're going for is to try and recreate the look when you get, you get all those scrap clay together and start melding it and putting it through the pasta machine. But we're going to hopefully have a bit more structure to it. So what I'm going to do, I've put all of these, I've conditioned all my clays and put them all through on a thin setting of the pasta machine. Now on my pasta machine, naught is thick and nine is thin. And I've already mentioned the um, playing cards if you're using that alternative. If you're unsure about conditioning polymer clay, then I do have a video with a few hints and tips and techniques, and I will put the link to that on the details below this video. You don't have to mix your colours up completely, as you'll see there's slight differentials in these ones, and I've done them basically so I could show you the colours, um, but as I say, you don't need to. And all I'm going to do now is I'm just very roughly, just with my thumb, just tearing these into pieces. You don't want the pieces all the same, so you can have some large, some small, but sort of spread them around a bit so they're not all sort of sitting on top of each other, and then alternate through the colours. So let's do green next. And just go through and do the same as this with all the colours, creating a pile in the middle of your workspace. When you finish, give them all a nice jumble up so you've got a nice mix of all the colours showing through. And then sort of gather them together in a rough sort of oblong amount and just press them down with your hands. What we're looking to do, we're going to sort of jumble these together, but we're possible we don't want to have any air trapped and we also don't want to have any holes. And when you've got them sort of nicely pressed down, then with your roller, just give them a roll. Pick the whole piece up, and if you're using a pasta machine, put it through your thickest setting of the pasta machine. If you haven't got a pasta machine, then just roll this until it's the same size. And I'll have given you the number of playing cards you need to do that when we were going through the equipment list. So putting it through, you start to see the effect you get when you're mixing up lots of um, colours to get some scrap clay for other techniques you do. Um, but what we're going to do, we're just going to accentuate this. So we're going to tear it into pieces again and do exactly the same as we did before by pulling it into small pieces. You want to, if you've got a big piece, make sure you sort of go through the middle 
of it because what we're looking to do is to get a, a nice variety of all the colours coming through and from this point on you can have slightly more control over it and decide which pieces you want facing up and we're going to do this putting it into pile or tearing it into pieces, putting it into pile, putting it back through the thickest setting of the pasta machine until we get a sheet that we like the look of the colours with. And what you get with this, because we're tearing it into pieces, is some of the pieces will stand end on, some of them will go flat, and you'll start to see a really nice mix of colours coming through. So this time when you put it back into a square and sort of flatten it down, if you've got a piece like there's a big piece of orange there, you can always turn it over and think actually I prefer that size, that side, you turn it over, put that round and have a think about what the pattern is that's looking at the top. And as before, roll, try to make sure you've got no gaps and no cracks. Have a turn over, look at the back side because sometimes the underneath is actually a nicer pattern than the top and then put back through again through the pasta machine on the thickest setting or roll um, to your thick setting of your playing cards and now you can really start to see some of those underneath colours showing through in the same way as the, um, the leaves will have all the colours showing through so I'm going to do it at least once more and then we'll see how we're going. If when you get it to this stage you find bits that you really like the look of, you can always put them to one side and then add them back in to the top of the pile. So you say you're, you've got more order and more structure into how you're putting this together. As this might be the last time I'm putting it through, I'm going to bend a bit more attention to make sure I've got a nice, flat, even shape and to try and make sure I've got no holes at all that are going to show through. I'm already thinking that's going to be nice when it comes through this time. Have a look on the bottom. Again, nice roll. And for the final time, put back through the pasta machine. I'm just going to spread it slightly that way because I know the size of my leaf so that when it goes through, it'll spread out that way and hopefully my leaf will fit on it. So there we go, a nice marbled sheet. Now, say I could do it again but I like the fact I've got all these colours starting to come through and it has got that lovely autumnal feel to it. So I've just moved my piece onto a piece of wax paper. Anything like this, baking parchment, tracing paper, something that's just nice and flat will work and then I'm going to find the leaf that I'm going to use for my bowl. So I'm going to use this one which is an autumn anemone leaf because I just like the shape they create sort of nice shaped bowls and it's got really good vein detail on the bottom but it has got the leaf or the stem that sticks out right at the bottom so very carefully with a craft knife I'm going to take that off so that it doesn't stick out into the bottom of my bowl and then it's just a case of deciding where you want the leaf to go have a look at your pattern don't forget to have a look at the underside because sometimes the underside you'll like the pattern on there and I think I'm going to go somewhere probably about there so I'm just going to press down and you want to press the leaf really firmly into the clay because you're going to get all that detail of the veining transferred into the clay. When it's nicely and firmly pressed in, I'm just going to cut away all the excess. Press it back together or tear it up again and you've got enough there probably to do another leaf bowl as well. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to carefully cut round 
out, following the outline and all the little intricacies on the outside of the leaf. If you've got one that doesn't have a serrated edge, you can always add one in. It's sometimes nice to give your look, your piece a serrated edge look. Um, if you've got one that's very serrated, then you can either exaggerate bits or miss bits out, whatever you want to do. If, like me, you've got a slight hole in your piece, we will come back to that before I bake it, and we will just add a couple of little grooves in there sort of to fit in where the piece of the leaf is missing. So, with your craft knife, carefully cut round. I leave my fingers on the leaf because it helps press the leaf into place and also means you're not sort of getting fingerprints elsewhere and it helps to then be able to turn the leaf round. So just follow down. I'll usually cut that piece off first. And go round and cut off the little serrated edges, always pulling the knife away from the leaf and work your whole way around the leaf. Once you've finished, peel the wax paper away and then get your larger leaf. Now again, you need to take away the stalk from this one. And use the larger leaf to fit over the top. Now this is going to be the underneath of the bowl, but we're going to want some veining on the underneath. And also, we want it slightly larger so that we take it right over the edge. And where you've got the edge, you can actually press down to make it that less chunky straight edge, more of a tapered edge, but you actually get a bit of an impression on the underside whilst you're doing that. So I will normally go around the edges first, overlapping the bigger leaf, unless you happen to have one that's so big it overlaps the whole thing, which is brilliant, but this one doesn't quite. They very rarely match up completely. So I'm just pressing down all the way around the outside edges so you get more of a tapered edge. And then I'm going to put it back where it fits so it's almost a copy and then press down to get the vein detail on all the rest. And because I've still got the leaf on the top side, it should stay in place and the veins on the top should remain in place where they are. One thing to be aware of when you've got a leaf that's got a very um, deep strong middle vein is to make sure that you haven't pressed both the top and the bottom so tightly in that the clays become virtually um, thin, so thin it's almost going to break through. But when you've got all that done, take the bottom leaf off, have a look at the vein effect, make sure it's all over the underside of your bowl. If, it's, if you've missed anywhere you can always go back and press the leaf in. And now we're just going to get a little piece of square of foil and we're going to create a shape to create our bowl and for that to sit in. When I'm doing the foil, I'll talk you through it first rather than doing it because obviously it's so noisy and then I'll mute the sound of it. I put my hand in the middle to create a flat space and then I pull the foil up around to create a form for the bowl or the leaf to sit in to create the bowl shape. So just do it roughly to start with, just something that's big enough, and then you can put your leaf in and start to shape it up so it creates a bowl shape. If you've got a leaf like this where it opens up, you can actually push the two bits together so the clay is joining in the middle and put the foil up to hold it up to create the bowl shape. If you want the top of the leaf to bend over, just pull it back then make sure you've got some foil holding it underneath to protect it whilst it's baking to hold the shape on. When you're happy with the shape of your bowl, carefully find an edge of your leaf and peel the whole of the leaf off to reveal the pattern. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, your bowl is now ready for its first baking. I will bake on a tile and tent the whole piece in more aluminium foil to protect it should the oven spike during baking and bake according to the manufacturer's instructions for the brand of clay you are using. And I'll bring you back when we've got that bit done. Once your bowl's baked, you can remove it from the foil container but keep the foil container with that shape in for now. And now's the time where we can start adding extra bits into our bowl. So I've got a sheet of plain paper here, a little piece of greaseproof paper, and I'm going to use some dark red, sort of autumnal red acrylic paint, and we're going to add the paint into the veins in the leaves. So when I'm just doing a small bit like this, then the greaseproof paper works really well. So I've got some wet wipes or some wet cloths to hand because we're going to put the paint on and then immediately wipe it off. This bit's going to get messy, which is why we've got the paper underneath to protect your work surface. If you'd rather, obviously wear gloves. I'm not that bothered about getting paint on my hands. So load a fair bit of paint on your brush and start putting it into all the veins across the leaf. Really press it down hard because you want the, the paint to go into the veins. I tend to do probably half the leaf to start with and all the detail, that's what you want it to go into. Go back in, squidge it down, get it into all those nice veins. And then straight away with a flat part of your cloth, wipe away the excess. And what should happen of course is that the paint stays in the veins and all the rest on the top comes away. So I'm going to repeat that for this half of the leaf. I'm going to turn over and do the same on the bottom and then I'll bring you back when I've done that and I'll go through quite a few of these cloths. Make sure you get clean ones out um, or use a bit clean bit of cloth every time you want to do a different part of the leaf. Having done that, I'm going to turn back to the top side because that's more or less dry for now. And once we've um, rebaked this and put some feet on, I'm going to be putting Gilder's wax or Gilder's paste all the way around the outside. And one thing I've learned from doing this is that if you take a little bit of this same acrylic paint and just put it on the very edge, just smear a bit on the edge, not too much, not too far, you create a nice surface that the Gilder's paste then goes on. And what I'm then going to do is I'm just going to gently smear that down to sort of smooth off the edges. And I'm going to do that all the way around the edge on the top side and then again on the bottom side. If you get too much paint on, then simply wipe it away quickly with one of those wet rags again. Okay, once you've finished top and bottom, you're then ready to put the legs on. The feet are very simple. Just take a piece of your leftover veneer that we'd made earlier, roll it up into a log, making sure there's no air trapped inside. Sometimes easier to put it into a ball first. And then roll it into a log. And I like to have tripod legs, so just three. Um, so I'm going to take off the end, because it always goes slightly round at either end, and then we just want three equal sized portions if we can. Something about like that. Just roll them into balls. Goes back to the sheet of wax or tracing paper we used earlier when we made the veneer. And I'm just going to press slightly down on the balls just to make them slightly flat on the bottom. I'm going to take a tiny little bit of liquid clay. Now, strictly speaking, you don't need um, to add anything. You can get the um, unbaked clay to stick to the baked clay. It just gives you a slightly better bond if you use a little bit of liquid clay. So I'm going to put the first one on there, 
one about there and one about there. Putting my finger underneath, so I've actually got pressing down, I've got something to purchase on underneath, so I'm not pressing down just onto the clay. I'm just going to press them down slightly and then turn it over onto your waxed surface. Now this is where you can put your fingers underneath to feel where those feet are, hold them in place whilst you're pressing down to level out or even out your bowl. And you can turn it round and change where the feet are slightly if you want to. Because what you're looking for is to have a nice flat centre to your bowl so that it will hold things. You turn your sheet round, have a look at the side, make sure you're happy with the way it looks. And when you are, gently peel the sheet away from the feet. Find your foil container that you baked your piece in. Sit your leaf back down in and readjust the foil so that it still is now coming up and is going to sit under and protect and support all the sides of your leaf. Once you've done that, as before, put on a tile, tent in foil and bake according to the baking instructions for the brand of clay you are using. So once your piece has baked and is cooled, just remove it from the foil and there is your bowl effectively ready but we're just going to add that final bit of decoration on it. Now you can either add this or leave this, it's completely up to you. It also looks quite nice just to add another darker colour just on the outside rather than the gilding or silver obviously. Um, if you use a bit of acrylic paint, do what I did when we put the brown on, just get yourself a small piece of paper and pull put a bit of um, paint on it, pull it flat so you've only got a very flat bit of paint on your finger so that we'll go around the edge. I've also gone back to this piece of paper just to protect my working tile for any, any mess we do and as I said at the beginning I'm going to use this form of Gilda's paste and because it's a tube all I've got to do is push out a little bit and take a little bit on the tip of my finger and then I'm just going to run it just along the outer edge of the bowl. I tend to do running around with that finger and then just drag it slightly down with that one and then just work your way around adding as much or as little as you want and occasionally I'll pop into the centre of the bowl too just to add a little bit of extra gilding right on the centre. And I'll carry on doing that the whole way around. Once I've done the top, I'll go over and I'll do the bottom. And I'll actually put even more on the bottom. So it, when you hold the bowl side up, you get quite a nice sort of gold look from the underneath. As you saw, I did all of the bottom, so the feet completely with the gilders paste, because I think it looks nice to have little sort of gold feet on the side, and so I added slightly more of the gilding on the underside. And then the final touch, which I like to do, although we um, pushed this edge quite th much thinner than it was, I like with a small brush to dip into the gilders paste and go right into all the edges, so that when you look at it from the top and the sides, you get that lovely solid gold feel right the way around the outside. And if you're using paint, then obviously you could do the same with the paint. So I just literally dip the brush into the gilders paint and paint along the sides. And then I'll just pull off and go around and pull off any little excess bits and then you've got a nice gilded edge. Brush across any bits that may have dropped into the middle. And although you've got a fair amount of gilding on there you can still see the colours really coming through. Having cleaned your hands and brush 
you then at a stage just decide whether you need to do anything further to finish it off. With the Gilders paste you should leave it for several hours just to sort of settle down and with some of the brands you can then just give a nice um, soft brush over and a burnish. With this particular one I do find it tends to leave a little bit of residue even sort of like a couple of days later which is why I will cover this with a layer of varnish and I quite like just the soft sheen that the um, Fima Gloss varnish gives you and of course as I mentioned earlier it's water soluble so there's no problem there with it pulling the Gilders paste around. If you've used acrylic paint just have a think about what you're going to use your bowl for. If it's likely to get lots of bangs and knocks and things when things are put into it then it might be good just to add a coat of varnish to that too. The Fimo varnish I use um, only needs about 20 to 30 minutes to um, dry so I'll do top first and just the underneath of the leaves, leave that to dry and then turn over and do the rest of the bottom. So apart from that we are virtually finished and I will bring you back when I've added that varnish. So there we are, there's the bowl all finished and so I've just given it a very light varnish just to give a slight sheen rather than a high gloss finish to it. So that was done with the Japanese anemone leaf. There's a version done with a raspberry leaf, very similar colours so same sort of look and of course you can go for something slightly brighter so here's the blue one that I showed you at the front as well and again exactly the same but I've just done a mixture of blues for this one and this was done with a larger leaf so obviously I used more clay. It's a fun technique and I hope you enjoyed that. As always thank you so much for watching and a special thank you to those of you who subscribe I really do appreciate it. Right I think we're done for now hopefully I'll see you next time. Bye for now. Bye.